Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday. Here's our system off the southeast United States coastline. This has been named Subtropical Storm Barrel by the National Hurricane Center. And this is kind of a historical event because this is the first time in over 100 years since 1908 that two named storms have formed in the Atlantic before June 1st, the start of the hurricane season. So this is a rather unique event occurring in the same location as Alberto just five days later after Alberto. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you can see the very well-defined circulation here, but it has lost a lot of thunderstorm activity since yesterday it formed a burst over the northern part of the circulation yesterday and that wrapped around and then kind of died out and you can see that it is a lot more naked and open than it was due to drier entrainment and uh, it's still very strong though in terms of circulation it has tropical storm force winds despite very few thunderstorms we had a ship 120 miles southwest of the center this morning a couple of hours ago reporting 36 knots sustained winds and a thousand six millibar pressure so this hasn't weakened a whole bunch this is probably still down near the thousand one millibar pressure pressure that the NHC has it at and a plane will be flying in there within the next couple of hours and we'll get a better gauge on exactly how strong this actually is but the question of course is whether it's going to regenerate thunderstorm activity and strengthen. If we take a look at the upper winds right now what we've done since yesterday is we've gotten this upper low stacked over the surface circulation. We've talked about how this is necessary in order to facilitate warm core transition uh, but it's not a said and done deal after we get it stacked. It has to work very hard to pump those thunderstorms up, warm the upper atmosphere, and then get some anticyclonic outflow, warm the core, and uh, make it a truly tropical system. This is going to be difficult to do. Alberto failed to do it because of too much dry air. Barrel has more uh, moisture with it. If we look at the water vapor imagery here, we can see that it is tapping into the moisture from yesterday, still wrapping itself in over here, uh, but there is dry air coming off the continent and getting wrapped in from this side. So it's a war between the dry air and the moisture right now. The question is whether the environment will allow Beryl to warm her core. At this point, what we've done is since the upper low is now stacked with the surface low, we've cut off the Beryl Clinic support that she had yesterday. Most of the thunderstorm activity from yesterday was from non-tropical processes, uh, though at the last burst at the end of the day was probably more tropical than not, but it quickly died because now uh, we've cut off the Barrel Clinic support. So we're forcing Barrel to use tropical processes to strengthen. And uh, I have a feeling that she will be able to start looking a little bit better as the day goes on. You can see she's not totally naked here. You notice that we've got these bands of popcorn convection trying to wrap into the center. You can even see that the surface center is stalling a little bit right now because it's trying to wrap itself into this band of showers on the eastern side here that's a uh, very shallow but still trying to develop here and uh, if we look at the loop that has the sea surface temperatures over it you can see it's right over the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm here the 27 degrees Celsius isotherm is in here and the track is going to be taking her towards the Florida coastline here over that so she's going to be moving over warmer waters today and that will likely aid uh, shower development near the center and uh, I have a feeling she'll maintain strength today probably maybe slightly strengthen. We're still holding on to the idea that she'll make it closer to 60 miles per hour wind speeds before landfall, probably weakening before landfall due to shelf waters here, but out here she could reach a peak near 60 miles per hour. She probably won't get those winds if she doesn't fire thunderstorm activity, but I do believe she'll be able to get better organized as she comes in. I forgot to put the European map up here from last night, but the European had a 997 millibar barrel coming into the coast of northern Florida near Jacksonville, uh, showing a strengthening of 8 millibars from its initialization. So it's, sh it's showing that barrel can still strengthen coming in towards the coast, though most of the models keep her at about the same intensity as she is now. So we're going to see how this goes. It's going to be a fight, but there's a lot of moisture in the area, at least compared with what Alberto had to work with a few days ago. Here's the total precipitable water imagery showing how much moisture is suspended in the atmosphere. You can see the mid-level entrainment of dry air deep into the circulation here and the moisture connection from the tropics still wrapping in as well. Again, the fight between these two and the moist core that Beryl does have here, keeping that round area of moisture at the center. If she can use that and uh, keep the inflow coming off of the warm Gulf Stream and perhaps develop some thunderstorms and start feeding back on tropical processes, she can at least maintain herself, if not slightly slightly strengthened before landfall and again before landfall these cooler shelf waters here are down near 25 degrees Celsius and will probably cause her to weaken a bit just before landfall and she'll be off her peak uh, but still causing tropical storm conditions moderate tropical storm conditions on the coastline in here.
Here are the tracks from the models. You can see getting tighter here in this cluster, basically in agreement with the area that we outlined yesterday between the Georgia coastline and Daytona Beach, Florida. And here we can probably narrow this down now towards probably the Jacksonville area, plus or minus 50 miles or so is what we're talking about here, 30 or 40 miles maybe. It's this general area in here. Uh, it'll be pinpointed, of course, with greater precision as we get in close, but it's not going to matter very much exactly where the center makes landfall in here. Barrel is a rather large circulation. There will be rainfall all around the center because of the dynamics at play. The upper air circulation is symmetric enough uh, that rainfall is going to be on the south side of the center too, despite the dry air wrapping. So there is going to be rain to be had for northern Florida and Georgia. And then you can see that the track comes in and it comes back out over the waters here and if it can make it over the Gulf Stream it may actually even try to redevelop just off the outer banks of North Carolina that will be something to watch for we may not be fully done with barrel after she goes inland and you can see that we're going to getting a nice swath of rainfall in here uh, for the southeast US and here's the Canadian ensemble mean showing this rainfall between one and four inches in this general area here not really enough to bust the drought that they have but it's definitely some relief and again in general barrel should be good news for these folks not so much bad so the winds are going to be that much of a problem probably 50 mile per hour winds at the coast or around there with higher gusts in some places if she actually gets some thunderstorms to come on shore and then this rainfall here should uh, be some good relief for folks so this should be a good situation uh, for this weekend and then again we'll watch for her coming out near the outer banks could get some gusty winds on the outer banks on the back side if she actually strengthens the European and most of the other models in fact have barrel reaching a stronger intensity out here than she ever does before making her first landfall so as she moves out to sea we may get to watch her show off some colors as she leaves stage right so we shall see what happens with that also, as we go back quickly to the Atlantic, we're going to be probably not seeing very much after barrel. You can see some thunderstorm activity in the Caribbean, but there's not much there. After barrel, it's probably going to be pretty quiet for the next couple of weeks. And uh, what I haven't put on here yet, but I will later in another video, is the pressure pattern that the ensembles are showing for North America indicates that lots of low pressure is going to be in here for a little of a while, and there's not going to be very much convergence of air coming down into the tropical breeding grounds of the early season, namely the Northwest Caribbean off the Southeast Coast, where we've had Alberto and a barrel and uh, the Gulf of Mexico. These regions aren't going to be seeing a lot of convergence according to the ensembles for the next couple of weeks and the MJO is also leaving this area of the world so we will likely have a quiet period and we may not see another chance for a storm until the second half of June next month so it's going to be a quiet period. Enjoy it while we have it and uh, we shall see what happens. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.